Hey guys, Mr. Clark again. Uh, I wanted to show you a few very important things um, that I think you should know and take away from that first hour of code that we've done. So let's get signed into code.org. Here we go. I'm clicking sign in. And then what do I click after this? The Google button. There we go. Continue with Google. To get back to our code, I go to course catalog and I am looking for the hours of code. Here they are. Hour of code. I need to hit view more so I can see them all. And the first hour of code you guys did or were supposed to do it is Classic Maze. So we are in there. All right. And we are just going to look through a few of the levels here um, just, to, just to check them out. Okay. Um, my two things that I told you guys before, and I will remind you over and over because it never stops being true, is you always need to watch and pay attention to the videos. And you always need to read the instructions. Okay. Can you help the next? Catch the naughty pig, stack, stack a couple of move forward blocks together and press run to help me get there. So they literally tell you exactly what to do. And that's true a lot of the time. The instructions will tell you exactly what to do. Um, sometimes they don't, but usually if they don't, it's because, they, it's because they've already taught you. Turn this down. It's because they've already taught you what to do. Um, so they expect you to be able to figure it out on your own. All right. So um, it's going to keep doing very simple levels like that for a few levels here. So let me... Try to skip ahead. Yeah, so on level 10, Chris Bosch here teaches you guys about repeat statements, okay? These are important. You're going to use these um, for the rest of the time that we're doing coding this whole semester. So you need to understand them. Now, in code.org, they're very easy to pick out because they're pink here, okay? And look, they're not shaped like these blocks. Let's call these command blocks. We're commanding code.org or the, the bird to do one thing with our command blocks. A repeat block is like a container, right? Look how it's shaped kind of like an alligator. It's it's something with a mouth. Inside of that mouth, anything we put in there, it will repeat over and over. So the only thing we have to do here is move forward. And it's going to repeat that over and over. So what I see a lot of students do, and this is a mistake, is put a bunch of move forwards in here. That's what the repeat does. We don't need to fill this up with as many move forwards as we think we need, you know, to jump to the pig, one, two, three, four, five, maybe. Because again, this says, repeat, move forward until you get to the pig. That's what that says. So it should just work. Let's hit run. And a one, two, three, four, and five. By the way, if you find it, um, if you find it annoying, if you find it too slow, uh, how slow the animations go when you hit run, they will eventually speed up quite a bit. So don't worry too much about that. So now let's look at this one. We need to jump one, two, then turn. And then guess what? If I'm thinking about this, that's what we have to do another time. Jump one, two, turn, jump one, two, turn, jump one, two, and then we'll get the pick. So what do I do? What do I put in here? Here's a hint. In a repeat block, you want to list your commands, your command blocks in the order you want them to go. And the repeat block will go down the list and then it will jump back to the top and it'll do the whole list again. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Move forward, move forward, because I want him to do it twice. And then which way should he turn, left or right? He's facing this wall, so that would be a left to go up. So he's going to turn left. And then when he's done with this one, he will jump back up to the top and do the whole list again. Watch. And you can see it. Pay attention to the highlight, this yellow highlight around this. Let me hit run and watch. Move forward, move forward, turn left. Then it repeats. Move forward, move forward, turn left. Then it repeats. Move forward, move forward. And he's done. Okay? So if you get that, if you get what I just showed you right now about repeat blocks, you get pretty much everything there is to get about repeat blocks now. That's it. Put stuff in a list inside of a repeat block, and it will run that list from top to bottom over and over, okay? Um, the only other thing, and I don't even know if it comes up during this hour code. I'll have to look around and see. Sometimes you can actually do this. You can put one repeat inside of another, but I don't think we even do that in any of these levels. That comes a lot later, um, but let's think about this one. Here's another thing I want to tell you guys. You will see zigzag patterns dozens of times um, before we're done with code.org, probably. So let's just talk about the zigzag pattern. It's pretty simple. You move forward, you turn in one direction, and this time it will be left. And then you move forward again, and you turn the opposite direction. That's how you zigzag. That's the whole thing. It's not any more complicated than that. Move forward, turn left. 
Move forward, turn right. Okay. And that's it. So let's hit run. Let's see if that worked. Remember this for zigzag patterns. It's not always forward, left, forward, right. Sometimes it's the opposite. Or sometimes you actually turn first, then move. But it's always some kind of variation on this. That's a zigzag pattern. Right. Not more complicated than that. Pretty darn easy. Uh, somebody said they were stuck on 15. So let me look at 15 specifically. Let's see if this one is extra difficult. All right. Okay, so... We start to, and I don't know if there's a video for this one. I don't think there is, but they start to add if loops. I, I think they tell you about them in 14 here. So look, let's read the instructions. Use the new if block to let me decide when to turn. So this is this block right here, if, we call this a conditional. Um, it means if a certain condition, if something is true, a certain condition is true, then do whatever you put inside of that. If it's not true, then they skip it. Okay, so just remember that, and I'll show you the next level too. Oh, by the way, here's another thing for you guys to know about code.org. If you've got gray blocks like this, code.org typically does not want you to touch these. Um, it wants you to add things to them, but it doesn't want you to go in, and I see so many students doing this, go in and grab them and start dragging them all over the place, okay, and trying to rearrange them, or even worse, trying to get rid of them. When they give you gray blocks and they're already put together like that, they're doing that because they're giving you a lot of the puzzle. So they don't really want you to mess with these too much. They just want you to fill in the blanks. So let's think about it. This says, okay, keep going till you reach the sunflower. That's what this repeat is for. It says move forward. And if you see, the, here's what this block means. If you see a path to the left, what should you do? The only thing you should do if he sees a path to the left is turn left because we already have our move forward taken care of. And those are the only two moves we need to do because we're going to keep repeating this until we get to the sunflower. Now watch, when I hit run, you're going to see a little thing that looks like a Wi-Fi symbol come out of him. And All what right. that is, what that is, do you see it? That's pointed to the left, his left all the time. So that is showing us that he is always looking to the left. Think of it as like his sensor or his detector. Right? He is trying to detect if a turn is to the left or a path is to the left. So let's do the same with 15. Here's the one somebody was stuck on. Now I can see here, he doesn't need to make left turns this time. He needs to make right turns. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing. The first thing it started with was repeat until you get to the sunflower. So let's start with that. And then we need to tell him to move forward. That's the first thing he's got to do. That's the most important thing. Keep going forward. And then if you see a path to your right, if you see a path to your right, then do what? Turn right. Don't got to do anything else. That is it. That's the whole puzzle. Four blocks. And look right here. Sometimes this is a good hint. This says, workspace, you've used five out of five blocks. So they're saying, if you do the puzzle perfectly, you should only use five blocks. So we know that's another hint that we got this right. Let's hit run and see. Right. You'll see that Wi-Fi symbol, meaning he's always looking to the right. He's looking to the right. And look, he repeated it until he got... He repeated it until he got to the sunflower and munched on it, all right? So that's how easy those ones are. Um, and I think that's all you really need to know all the way until the end of this one. I mean, look at this. This is pretty much the same dang thing. So I'm going to let you guys do 16 on your own. I'm not going to show it to you. you got a repeat block, repeat until you get to the nut. You've got an if block if you see a path to the left. So this, this is literally pretty much the exact same thing that we just did for the last two levels. So, um, and then level 20... Someone else was saying they were very stuck on level 20. Look, this is another very similar level. This time, though, they have one if inside of another if. So um, let's think about this in a few different ways. First things first, these are all gray blocks. So again, they don't want us tearing this apart and trying to get rid of these. We're supposed to use these. So let's just fill them in. And let's just think about this logically. Let's just slow down and think about it. It's actually very simple when we do that. If you see a path ahead of you, what should you do? Well, of course, if you see a path ahead of you, if he sees a path ahead of him, he should move forward. That's all that is. If you see a path to the right of you, what should you do? Well, of course, if he sees a path to his right, he should turn right. And then, or else, what's the other thing we haven't covered yet? We only have three commands here. We've already done move forward and turn right, right? So what would the or else be? Of course, it's turn left. Now we've got everything covered. 
he sees a path ahead of him, he's going to go ahead. If he sees a path to the right of him, he's going to turn right. If he doesn't see either of those two things, that's when the code goes to the or else. And the or else tells him to turn left. All our bases are covered. So let's hit run. And let's see if it works. And look, he's checking ahead of himself until he doesn't see anything ahead. And then he starts to check the other directions. You can see that with his Wi-Fi symbol. Cool. And this is working. All right. So notice these take a little bit of thinking, but if you don't start pulling things apart, if you slow down, you pay attention, you make sure you understand what they're asking you. Um, they're actually pretty darn simple and they're pretty darn quick to do. So hopefully that helped you guys out a lot. And, and just notice if you, if you, just slow down a minute and really think about it before you start dragging blocks around. It'll make your life a lot easier. You'll end up actually going faster, not slower, if you read the instructions and think a little bit first.